In this video, we're going to take a look at a new web framework called PyWeb.io, and we're starting right now. So PyWeb.io is a simple web framework that does not require you to have any knowledge of HTML and JavaScript. Although if you have those knowledge, it can come in handy because you could integrate those code right inside your Python web application. And so in order to install PyWeb.io, you can go ahead and use pip install. And if you would like to have the newest version, you could also install the development version as well. But for myself, I'm using the stable version. So you can go ahead and use pip install and then PyWeb.io. And so the web application that we're going to be building today is going to be based on this particular example. So it's going to be a simple web application that will allow you to calculate the BMI. So all you need to do is input the height and also the weight, and then the web application will do the calculation. So at a high level, the PyWeb.io allows you to run the web application in one of two modes as a server mode or as a script mode. In a script mode, all you need to do is you could actually create a web application right inside the command line. But in server mode, you're going to put it into a file, kind of like an app.py file. And then all of the custom function, all of the importing of libraries will be in that application file. And so that will be running like a traditional web server. And so in this first video, we're not going to cover so much into the details of the functionalities of PyWeb.io, although there is a long list of functionalities that you could implement. And so in a nutshell, I would recommend for you to take a look at pywebio.input and also pywebio.output. So input is essentially allowing the web framework to get input from the web browser. So essentially you could have a text box that will allow you to input the numbers or input the names or input attributes or information into the web application. And then on the back end, you could perform some processing using the variables that are provided as input. Input. And then after you have done some form of processing, you could spit the resulting output out. And you could do that by using the pywebio.output. And so there's a long list of functions of various output that you could use, such as a normal text, markdown output, table output, image output, etc. And you could even control information parameters pertaining to the session of the web application and also the platform for deploying the web app. And so in today's tutorial, we're going to be building this simple BMI application. And so let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is fire up a text editor. So I'm using a Atom IDE and you can use your own favorite text editor as well or your favorite IDE as well. And so as you can see here, this code was copy and pasted directly from the previous web application right here with some modification, which I will be explaining to you in just a moment. Okay, so the next thing is to open up your terminal. And so go ahead and activate your own Conda environment. And the one on my computer is called Data Professor. And then the file is on my desktop in the coding directory in the PyWeb.io directory. All right, and so I have a couple of files in here and I'm working on a finance web application. And so this might be in the future tutorials, but in the meantime, let's have a look at the app.py, which is the BMI. And so we're going to run the app by typing in Python, app.py, enter. Okay, there's an unexpected indentation. Let's have a look. Okay, right here. All right, and so notice that when it's working, it's going to have a message printed out as follow, listen on, and then the port number 80, and the IP is 0000, which is on the local computer. And then I'm going to refresh the browser here. And so you're going to see here that the web application is asking for the input. And so the first part is input of the height. And so let me specify 170. 
weight, let me specify 70, you know, enter, and then you get the calculated BMI and also the category to be normal. So let's have a look under the hood here. And so the first couple of lines will be importing the necessary libraries used by this web application. And so we're importing PyWeb.io, which we will be using on the last line here. I'll go over that in just a moment. And then from PyWeb.io.input, we're going to import input and float. And from the PyWeb.io.output, we're going to be importing specifically the put text, put HTML, put markdown, and also put table. So we're going to make use of all of these functions. And so here they're creating a custom function called BMI. And then as you will see here, the arguments will include defining the height and the weight. And the height and the weight variable will be taking as input the values of height and weight, as you will see right here when we refresh the web app. So input your height is right here on line number seven. And the type is float. Let me put in 170. And then input your weight is on line number eight. Import your weight. Type is also float. I'll put in 70. But let me try put, putting in random number, like, like random text, like ABC. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I get a warning message saying that the input is not valid. And so it's detecting that we're not putting in the numbers. All right, and then it calculates the BMI. According to this, equation and after it has calculated the bmi to be 24.2 it will go to the bmi variable and it will be printed out right here and then for the category it will check to see whether the calculated bmi falls into the following threshold so because it is 24.2 it falls within the normal category. And so if it goes beyond, it will go to the next category of overweight or moderately obese or even severely obese if it goes beyond 35. So you can see here that this is called the top status variable. And so this for loop will be doing the following. It will be performing an iteration of the top status variable here. And then the top will be the number here. And then the status will be the status that you see here, the status label. And then if the BMI value is less than or equal to the top value, which is the numbers that you see right here, if it's less than or equal to, then it will do the following. It will print out the text and it will also print out the status and also the BMI value. And also before that one line, it'll also print out the markdown of results. And the double asterisk that you see here will make the text in a bold text. And the hashtag that you see here will be making the text as a heading one, meaning that the size will be big as a header. And you also see that there is a underline underneath it as well, which is a horizontal line. Okay. And so you could also play around with the various output functions, put HTML, put markdown, put table as well, which comes from the pywebio.output. So as mentioned earlier, pywebio allows you to accept input from the user, which is the the input box that you see here. There's also many other like drop down as well. And the output here will be the various text output that you could also print out like tables, markdown, HTML, or also just plain text. So let me modify this a bit and let me add some additional HTML. Let's see what happens. And then we save it. And once we saved it, we're going to press Control C in the terminal in order to stop the running web application. And then we're going to run it again, Python app.py. And then the app is running. Let's refresh it. All right, let's put in the numbers. And then you can see here that the output of right here it's going to be the put text which is a plain output and so here on the line 20 we're using put html function which uses the double br tag and so that provides us ample white space underneath the first line here and then for the put markdown function we're putting in the text and then it's going to essentially be the same as the one in the put text but then we also added as you can see the tick symbol here and so the tick symbol will allow us to put in the special formatting on the value of BMI and also the status here. And so you notice that the color will be a bit red here. 
for normal as well. And also for lines number 22, we're going to be making use of the put HTML function, which allows you to put HTML tags in here or HTML codes in here. And so the horizontal rule is right here. And you could also put the resulting output in the form of a table. So we're using the put table function. And so here, this is the first row and then the second row of the table. So you can see that your BMI and also the category is on the first row or the header row and then BMI value and the status value will be underneath it right here. And then on line number 30 and 31, this allows us to make this particular file into a web application. And so here we specify that we're going to make use of the BMI function, which is the custom function that we have defined on line 6 through 28. And also we specify that we're going to use port 80. And it's because we're using port 80, it means that we don't have to put any port number in here because port 80 is the default port. However, if you put in another number here like 55, then you'll also have to put in the port number like this. Okay. So there you have it, a simple web application using the PyWebIO library in Python. And so I'd love to hear from you how you plan on using the PyWebIO for your own data science projects. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.